Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 1459, written by C. Jane Go. The Mind-Blowing Cat Conspiracy Last night after dinner, my partner, I'll call him H, went back into the kitchen for something and observed Luna, our black cat, sitting on the little red stool that I put in the kitchen in front of the French doors a few days ago so the cats can look out. We have red curtains flanking those doors, and the curtains were pulled closed, providing a contrasting backdrop for Luna, who was on the stool. He said, Luna is on the stool, and he shows up well with the red curtains behind him. I'm always talking about how I can't take good photos of Luna because he's black, and you can never see him well. It was just a passing comment, and I made a mental note to take a photo of him sometime in that spot. So H comes back to join me on the sofa. We chat for about 10 to 15 minutes or so, and he gets up to go back to the kitchen. He said, Luna's still in here on the stool. I told him that it was weird that he'd just be hanging out by himself in a dark, closed-off kitchen. Normally, he'd be with us, wherever we are. It wasn't like he had anything to look at outside. The curtains were closed, due to the cold drafts. I tried to reason out that weird behavior, but cats do weird things, so I didn't think much of it. I told H that he's probably just waiting for a treat. I had been giving the cats treats every night for the last three nights or so, so that kind of made sense. As H was leaving the kitchen, he tried calling for Luna to come out, but he didn't. I tried calling too, from the sofa. By the way, you can't see the kitchen door and stool where Luna was from our sofa in the living room. As H was walking out of the kitchen and through the dining room towards the sofa again, we were talking about how Luna knows the words treat and that I have to spell it out so he doesn't get worked up. He suggested that I call out that I have a treat so that maybe he'd come out of the dark kitchen and join us in the living room. I told him that if I did that, he'd have to actually get up and go get a treat from the kitchen when he came out. <laughs> I was being lazy. But ultimately, we decided to test the little experiment. By this time, H had joined me back on the sofa. There is a chair next to the sofa where our blonde cat, Sol, was snoozing away on a cozy black blanket through all of this. I noted that I wasn't sure if Sol knew the word treat as well as Luna and said that it would be interesting to see how Sol responds. I start saying at first in a softer voice, anybody want a treat? Still no Luna emerging from the kitchen, so I said it again a little louder. We looked over at Sol and he was slowly opening up his sleepy little eyes, but still no Luna. I said it again two or three times, and all the while we were glancing between Saul and towards the dark kitchen entry, watching to see if Luna would come out. And then, when I was looking at Saul, whose head was completely raised at this point, I see right beside him another pair of green eyes, and quickly realize, we actually both realize at the same time, that Luna was curled up on the chair with Saul? And when I say curled up, it was like kind of curled up therein when cats are in total relaxation or nap mode. I'm not sure about other people who have cat siblings, but with my cats, if they end up napping together, it usually starts with one cat already asleep, usually Saul, then the other will jump up on them and start cleaning them, licking their ears and faces. Then one or two things will happen. The others start to play fight until it turns serious-ish, in which case I have to scold them because usually the napping cat just isn't in the mood to play fight, or on rare occasions, the imposing cat just cleans his brother and then curls up and sleeps right next to him. It is never just a cat jumps up on the other and just goes to sleep or in chill mode. It's always a process. <laughs> I know because I always have to keep an eye on them when one jumps on the other in case one, usually Luna, starts bullying the other, biting too hard and so on. So this means at some point between H leaving the kitchen the second time, when H observed Luna still on the stool, and coming to the sofa, Luna would have to have had darted out really quickly without us noticing and then ran straight to the chair his brother was in, all within full view of where we both were, and settled down right away without waking his brother up. That is just not the way Luna operates. He doesn't dart through the house unless on rare occasions he's playing with his brother and they have the zoomies. Otherwise, Luna lumbers. He's a lumberjack. That's why his nickname is Luna Bear. He looks and lumbers like a small black bear. And what's more, I had called out, anybody want a treat? And treat, treat, several, several times. Ordinarily, when treat time is announced, 
He always comes running into the room, always the kitchen, except for last night, when we were trying to learn from the kitchen. Meowing like crazy and acting like he's dying or going through a withdrawal and just needs a hit of that life-saving cat treat. It's a running joke that the food and treats are one of the rare things that he'll actually run up for. But he was just sitting there on the chair curled up next to his brother looking at me like, what are you going on about? We were, are, so baffled. H and I looked at each other like, what the hell just happened? He immediately went back to the kitchen where he just was and there was no Luna on the stool because Luna was apparently on the chair next to us. I don't even know, but damn. Case notes are file 1459. The mind-blowing cat conspiracy. Mind-blowing is a fair assessment, I would say. And yeah, there's no way you wouldn't have heard Luna moving, as you describe, so quickly and being with her brother, even if, for some reason, Luna just went to her brother, napping together and never fought. You would have heard the cat rushing in from the kitchen. Is it just pet teleportation? Maybe. Something along those lines does seem to happen often. And I wonder, maybe teleportation is only possible for placeholders. That is to say, pets and maybe insects and humans that don't have a soul. They're just creations of the simulation. Whereas some people and some animals really do have souls. They are animated. Everyone else is just a placeholder. Like in a video game where there's NPCs and real players in an MMO. Only much more complex and realistic. And now time for the fact of the day. Honey never spoils. Archaeologists have found pots of honey in ancient Egyptian tombs that are over 3,000 years old and still perfectly edible. The long shelf life of honey is due to its low moisture content and acidic pH. This creates an environment that inhibits the growth of microorganisms. I just thought that's pretty cool. And not just for prepper ideology or preparedness, right? Prepper preparedness. <laughs> But it makes sense to have food that lasts a long time. Even if it's just canned food, but honey is a sweetener that'll last a long time. Much more than sugar, I believe. But just a word of caution, if you buy honey in a supermarket, sometimes some of them are not actually honey. Or they're mixtures of honey and high fructose corn syrup or some other sweetening syrup that looks like honey but isn't honey. You can definitely tell it if you do a comparison. I think the Walmart Great Value brand is not real honey, so just keep that in mind. It's one of those cases where usually spending more money is worth it. And if you want a real treat, get the comb as well. Damn, it's so delicious. It's really like a natural candy bar. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony signing off.